Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about how to tell when real estate prices are starting to drop. So the first thing that I want to point out is Just like any other commodity, real estate is cyclical. And what that means is it has up cycles and down cycles, and then neutral cycles, which are neither up nor down. An average real estate cycle lasts about seven to eight years. It's important to note that right now we're in the equivalent of two upward cycle as we are today. So basically since 2008 up until now, it's been a seller's market with the the last two years having been an acute seller's market, meaning super, super strong for the sellers. Now, of course, we help plenty of buyers buy houses during that time as well. So it's certainly feasible to both buy and sell a house regardless of the market that we're in. The way that you're going to tell if the prices are dropping is by seeing if a trend is starting to develop because the listing agent and the sellers are all ultimately the ones that are going to decide where to list the house. And then the market is going to either confirm that price by offering at asking or say that's underpriced by offering over the asking price of the, in the event that there's multiple offers. Or if the house sits, people are going to offer under the asking price, which is the market saying that they were priced too high. Sometimes listing agents make mistakes and they over list okay that's one thing that's worth noting but assuming that listing agents are doing their jobs right and they're listing houses at the accurate price well now the market is going to confirm that price by paying at asking or say it's underpriced by paying over or overpriced by paying under and right now we're seeing about 25% of houses taking price decreases so what does that mean one in four sellers is lowering their price. Part of that is because we're still riding on the super strong seller high of 20 and 21. Seller expectations right now are through the roof because that's what it's been for the last two years. On average, your house is appreciating 17%. That's 34% in two years. Crazy. And so right now, the market that we're in is still a strong seller's market. It's just not extremely strong like 20 and 21, which is what's closest in the rear view mirror. And therefore, that's what we have to compare it to. Listing agents and sellers are taking some price reductions, which means that the market it is cooling off a little bit. But cooling off is far from correction. And, and we're not anywhere close to anything like 2008. A lot of this is driven by the interest rates increasing. And that is all due to the Federal Reserve. If the interest rates remain low, we would still have a super strong seller's market. And of course, the reason that the Fed is doing that is to offset super high inflation that we're experiencing. So even though, and being in the real estate market myself, you know, I'm not super happy to see the interest rates increase, but being good with numbers, I see the importance of it. And it's really important to do that now, today, than to let it go and experience massive inflation like we did in the 80s. And then, and then we really have to increase the interest rates a lot. Like right now, they actually just went down a little bit last week. So we're at five and a quarter with decent income and credit. Jerome Powell did say that we might see a 1% increase next month. So if you're thinking about buying, now would be a great time to get your house under contract before the increase that's gonna take place next month. But still, nonetheless, historically, Interest rates are in the mid 7% average since they've been tracked. So we're still well under 
the historical average of what the, the interest rate is. Then the other thing to keep in mind is once the inflation starts to tamper down, the Fed is going to turn around and lower those interest rates again. Personally, I don't think that we're ever going to see them in the 3% again, unless something major like COVID-19 or something equivalent to it happens again. But otherwise, I don't think we'll ever see it in the 3%. So once the inflation starts to temper down, the Fed will be able to adjust the interest rates down again. Now, if you're a buyer and you're thinking, well, you know, prices have appreciated 34% in the last two years and interest rates are high right now, maybe I should wait to buy. That is actually wrong because the real estate prices overall are still gonna keep on trending up. So if you were to wait a year from now to buy your house at a lower interest rate, it would probably be about the same, you know, because the lower interest rate will be offset by the price increase. And you also will not have experienced any debt pay down or appreciation between now and when you actually buy. The other thing to keep in mind is if you're renting, well now your interest rate is 100% because none of your rent is building you any equity or giving you any type of return on your payment. So it actually makes more sense to buy today. Even if the market adjusts a little bit, which I don't think it will, but let's just say that it did. If you bought a house in 2008, in 2010, you were even. So even it, and that we were talking like 25% hits in 2008, which we're not anywhere close to experiencing here. So if you buy your house, worst case scenario, it takes two years after a small correction, but odds are in between now and two years from now, it will only have gone up. So to see how the market is doing, how it's adjust adjusting, you look at the trend that's starting to develop. When you get to over 50% of houses that are starting to take price reductions, well now we're going into correction mode. And that would be a great way to see what happens in the next few months. Are we still going to stay around that 25% mark? Or are we gonna get closer to 50%? So only time will tell. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Val Lamont.